National Science Academy where we're sitting um, agreed to a workshop on what we've called knowledge for flood disaster risk reduction in India. Uh, disaster risk reduction uh, is, a, is a relatively new concept um, and it, it really argues for being proactive to increase resilience of people and communities and infrastructure before floods occur rather than just being reactive uh, in an emergency situation. Um, reaction is still necessary obviously but uh, we can reduce the damage and lives lost if uh, the community is more prepared. Um, and floods in India are a serious problem. In fact, India is the second most flood prone, prone country in the world after Bangladesh. And the damages and, and loss of life each year are quite substantial. And so this is a very important um, problem for India to solve. Not just India, but, but particularly India. And it's... Um, one of the things we realized when we started looking at the uh, plans of, by Indian government agencies was uh, there's a lot of emphasis on policies, on uh, institutional structures, um, financing, but not a lot of emphasis on what knowledge do you need in order to reduce risk and that's what we focused on here. First step, I mean, a lot of people have done a lot of work in India on the knowledge required, um, but it's, it's been, uh, it hasn't been focused particularly on this topic of disaster risk reduction. Uh, and so there's knowledge required across many, many fields, for example, from the natural sciences, the social sciences, policy, governance structures, uh, financing, accountability of, uh, of government agencies the involvement of, of community groups, NGOs, um, you know, so the, and also the, the perhaps we might say the revitalization of traditional institutions at the village level that uh, can be extremely valuable uh, in um, mitigating the effects of flood. Vulnerability is the key issue. Um, unless you can reduce the vulnerability of people uh, to floods, then you're really not making much progress. Uh, you can do all the science you like on what causes floods and, and so on, but without understanding and reducing vulnerability and, and thereby increasing resilience of people, you don't make much progress in reducing the risk. Um, so India is very vulnerable, um, unhappily. Uh, uh, India has um, some of the world's largest rivers, some of the most volatile rivers in the Himalaya, um, and a, lots of, a large population living in dangerous places. And so, for example, in Assam, there are a lot of people who live right near the Brahmaputra, which is again one of the great, great rivers of the world, um, and a very dangerous river in many ways. And we can see this vulnerability uh, in the figures that are available from government departments in India that uh, the, the damages are going up um, and that implies that, that people are more and more vulnerable. That's partly a result of population growth but also uh, moving uh, people building in dangerous places. One of the talks we had at this meeting was by um, uh, Dr. Ramesh Valor from the Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology. And uh, he showed how in the, uh, in the Himalaya particularly, uh, the frequency of intense rainfalls has been increasing over the last 50 or so years, uh, both in the West and in the East. And so uh, that's of concern because of course, intense rainfall generates bigger floods. In the, in the plains, it's a mixed story. This, this, it, does, it isn't quite as clear. Um, but, but these changes do present a challenge to, to estimating the frequency of floods, the size of floods, etc. And so that, that challenge is, is now understood. And I, I, think, I think there will be some progress on that.
One of the talks at the, uh, at the meeting was from a gentleman from the UNDP and he made, he was talking about the governance regime and he was making I think a very important point that India like other countries needs um, a more proactive planning scheme, in other words planning um, to show where the most dangerous places are, uh, to try to limit uh, occupation of those if, if that's possible. I mean, some parts of India that's simply not possible, um, but in some places it is. And to perhaps uh, become, uh, get insurance more actively involved, insurance companies, private companies, as l along with the government insurance agencies, um, because if you, can't, if you can't convince people to move or they can't move, they can't afford to move, whatever the reasons may be, if, they can, if possibly there can be an insurance scheme that would help them, um, it would also relieve the cost on the, on the public budget for relief, which currently is quite a large sum of money. So planning uh, and, and getting the governance structures, uh, the governance structure for floods, in fact, any environmental disaster in India is actually very, very complex. Mm -hmm. But his point was that simplification of that will come about through better planning. Mm -hmm. and, and that's beginning to happen. I mean, town planning, for example, in India is a relatively new phenomenon, mm -hmm. but it's, it's moving quite quickly. And uh, we've, uh, for example, I was in um, Leh in Ladakh last year, and uh, they have a master plan for the city, etc. So you know, we're, we're starting to see that happen. Uh, and the smart cities, of course, will need planning uh, and they'll need disaster planning, not just for IT and industry, etc., but they'll need disaster planning as well. That connection between economic development and disaster planning uh, has yet to be made, as far as I can see. So that, that's an important thing that needs to happen soon. Because, in fact, these disasters are so expensive um, that they can wipe out the economic benefit um, of, say, development of an IT industry or whatever. So